it's time for The Good Doctor. Previously on The Good Doctor, Dr. Phil Good in his guise of Dr. Deja Vu had finally met Patient X. Do- Dr. Creep? Dr. Deja Vu is astounded by the sight before him in the dark, dingy basement laboratory sits a glass bottle with a pointy-eared, old, bald-headed man's head floating in a strange, glowing liquid with wires running in and out of the man's head. The head that he recognizes as having been his arch-enemy in his superhero past as Dr. Creep. Yes, my old enemy. It's me, of course. History records me as being Dr. Creepington, the founder of this clinic. But as I'm sure you're aware, this was a false history. (sighs) Forgive my surprise, Doctor, but you're not at all who I expected. Ah, yes. You seek Oppenheimer, man, yes? But my dear Doctor, he is here. Why, he is everywhere. And use everything. We are all Oppenheimer man. From time to time he appears. But he's so far removed from us, we can't quite perceive him. In a human form he appears as a mildly retarded patient here, called Peter Potentate. But don't look for him. You can't reach him through that. He's too far beyond us, now that he encapsulates the universe. Forgive my need for riddles. You see, we, and by way, I mean myself, Tempstress, the Smiling Skull, and the two alien agents. We tried to subdue Oppenheimer Man, but alas, we were like straw men fighting a hurricane. We turned to the one man who had manipulated him before, Victor Victorian, also known as Lightning Rod. We broke him out of prison in exchange for his help. Oddly enough, he seemed to agree with the alien's plans. You know, or rather, knew Victor now as Victor Hangenbottom. Say, Victor played on Oppenheimer Man's sense of hopelessness at having no purpose in life. So, he asked him to help correct the wrongs of the universe through the dream machine. Victor had his own agenda in wanting to erase the events that led to his downfall. He also still dreamed of creating the utopian world he had always believed in. But our Venusian and Martian friends had other ideas. After the machine was activated, there was a flash of light, and then I found myself. In 1938, we had all been scattered through time. Only things were different. There were no superheroes, no giant robots, radioactive monsters, no aliens. There was nothing but life. The daily drudgery of normal life. Eventually, we called out to each other. Since the one thing from the old world that still existed was our secret lab, where the dream machine was still on, it seems Oppenheimer man got the drop on us. Victor had managed to make himself super rich, but like me, he lost his youth, and the aliens were the last of their kind. So, we had to fix this. So, we set up our clinic and hired Dr. Boner, who had been the Crimson Cicada. But now, well, he was just a doctor. We needed his skill of gadgetry, even though he didn't know he had it. Oppenheimer Man had become the universe. But he was still linked to our dream machine. So the only way to manipulate him was to plug a mine directly into the machine. Little did I know that the aliens, Sam and Spawn and Gentlemental, had elected my brain for the job. So they chopped off my head and stuck it in this bottle where it's been ever since. Meanwhile, across town at the apartment of Sam and Spawn, the all-seeing eye and Detective Andrew Lohammer, in his guise of the superhero, the peacekeeper, find the enigmatic attorney clinging to life on the floor of his living room with a knife in his ass. Spawn! 
<sighs> Rolling Salmon Spawn over. The two men are astounded to see Salmon Spawn's eyes without his sunglasses, for his two eyes have the appearance of slick, oily, black orbs. What happened? It... It was gentle. Bitch stabbed me in the back. She stabbed you in your ass. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell was this all about, Spawn? We... We were trying to wipe out humanity by turning them all gay so they wouldn't breed anymore. Ha! <laughs> I knew it! Then... Then she and I would make a new race based on our superior Martian and Venusian genes. But her lust for women turned her against me. Bad enough I'm betrayed, but did she have to illustrate it by stabbing me in my ass? Oh. Spawn! Spawn! Where's Gentle now? It's too late, Walker. He's dead. Oh no! How will they get the answers they need? Is all hope lost? Well, find out in the next exciting episode of... The Good Doctor. The Good Doctor is a Nielsen production, written and performed by me, Douglas Nelson. Incidental music is provided by Kevin McLeod and other public domain sources.